Hi guys, this is Matt Longmire, the writer, director, and editor of The River, and I'm here with Michael Jaworski, our host, who's actually appearing right now. Howdy, howdy. And uh, Don Danielson, who plays Player One. Good evening. Um, and we are here to talk about the process of making The River and what that was like. Right now we're just seeing sort of the opening promo, um, which actually in the beginning was the intro of the film. This was sort of the opening title credits, but it turned into such a great trailer when the uh, film was converted into a web series. So it's been five years. Don, tell me, what have you been up to? Uh, a little of everything. As an actor, you're always uh, looking for your next gig. Um, I play a lot of softball on the side. Oh, yeah? Which I enjoy. Living in Southern California, we have the opportunity of uh, playing year-round, so I, I get to do that. And, uh, That's awesome. Um, been doing some more web series, a um, uh, couple independent films, and uh, I did a uh, couple, couple television uh, appearances. So always trying to stay busy, and, and i, I got to get on that marketing thing. Yeah. I'm terrible at that. I, it's, That's changed a lot for actors. It's, you can't just be an actor anymore. You no. have to like be an actor and a very public voice. Yeah, and a small business. And oh, totally, <laughs> exactly. You have to be like your own LLC. Or Absolutely, you have to be a, like a, a living, breathing billboard. Learn how to brand right off the bat. Totally, which is interesting because you would think that you know an actor, you should have a little freedom to just be creative and not have to worry about stuff like that. But I guess you know, it's it's. What do you think is more important, having an agent or doing being able to do that? Doing, I think it's doing that. Yeah. Because mm. you can't rely on your, your agent or your manager. Um, I think until you're, my opinion, until you're a brand name, right. I, I think you're everybody else. So you have to fight to become that brand name where uh, you're recognizable. Sure. Makes yeah, sense. I agree with him on that sense. So, Michael, what have you been up to? Uh, a lot of the same as an actor, just hustling, bartending, walking dogs, um, writing, producing. Oh, cool. What are you writing? I've written, uh, I've written a couple of scripts, but recently I've written a supernatural slash zombie apocalypse script that takes oh. place during Hurricane Katrina. Oh, wow. So That's... You, you, we should Very have you, specific. We should have, you write, <laughs> we should have you write season two of the river where everybody comes back to life. Yeah, where everyone rises from it. Yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> well, that's good. It's good Who to lives in the death just... game, afterlife death game? And, and how, yeah, well, I guess, actually, no, I think everyone but only Otto would come back. No, you would come back. Well, spoilers. We're, we're oh, right. <laughs> just the, in case the someone you're saying headshot yeah, yeah, yeah. as opposed to just in case someone happens this to be is watching true. this, this is prior true. to watching the actual. There's show. always a shower scene in all these web series. Always, always. <laughs> yeah, and the shower, that shower scene was interesting. We never quite got the uh, the fog correct. Um, we had to fog that room for like ten minutes, and then you know, uh, finally we're able to get a little bit of a like a mirror wipe, but. Um, I'm sure at some point you've already mentioned that this is the house that you lived in. Yes, this is the house I lived in at the time. Um, that would be a I'm, fun factoid. I know. I, I should have this little like. <laughs> Do not, spoiler alert! It's like MTV. <laughs> this is Matt's house. MTV pop up video. You know, I could have one of those things. That's great. Um, this is where Justin gets hit, hit by a car. Whoa! Yeah. I know. <laughs> well, actually, I'm about to. This is my cameo in the in the show. Was oh, it your hands? It's my hand. Your hand. <laughs> yeah, because I think I think you were busy that day. Something was it? Were, it was that? Yeah, yeah, I can't remember. It was like it was a, the last pickup or something. It but was we like knew a, we knew it was okay because yeah. it was only going to be the hand. But, right. But uh, mentioning in the the preview shot, I wanted to wanted to mention how what was it? And that really was your it. hands. Those was those were my hands, sweaty yeah. as they were. How many times did we do that in just one shot, or was it two? Uh, we did it in two because um, we knew what we wanted, and we knew that we would be able to edit it down to just portions. Right. Um, I think we actually filmed that. It was about six minutes of filming right. per take. And then it ended up getting cut down to, oh, there's Don. Uh, <laughs> that guy can act with his face. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Punchable as it may be. <laughs> but we, we did manage to get that uh, opening thing down to just like the perfect amount to be a trailer. And, right. and people were so, because I launched that way before I launched the series. I call that the prologue. 
Because um, <laughs> it, it wasn't really an episode. It was just kind of a, a warm-up. But I just remember my hands just bubbling up from it being so hot and the, those rubber gloves. and. Well, it worked out great. Yeah, it looked great. Yeah. And, and like the this kind of effect of having you walk in with the light behind you, really, it really uh, played the way we wanted it to. Yeah. Um, so, Don, tell me about your, what was it like sort of, filming this this time well this is the end of the episode but <laughs> <laughs> what, was it filming the end of the episode? what was it like filming the credits um no what was it like uh the in this area where we're where the characters are just kind of waking up they're just learning what's happening and actually the next episode where he really gives the rules uh is where we hear more about it but what was it like kind of like what were you thinking in this kind of wake up moment that was happening well wasn't that one of the first scenes we shot it was, and actually it was incredibly awkward because it was improvised, and because we hadn't re- filmed anything else and hadn't mm-hmm. really rehearsed much of the script at that point, um, nobody really knew what to improvise. Yeah, and, and, and uh, what your version of waking up from a groggy... Right, right. Drugged uh, state. Drugged state. <clears throat> But you guys pulled it off, and actually, um, we had a whole, in the film, there was like a whole 60 seconds of blurry, hearing people talking kind of thing, waking Mm up. Uh, It was supposed to be kind of a POV from... I remember uh, that. Yeah, that was in the film version. Oh, we took the the, the, the closed caption camera POV, or...? Oh, the security camera? Yeah. No, there there is a security camera. That's still that's still within. Yeah. Yes. Um, there was there were two, and I did I did cut one. But I think right, I cut that by is. accident, to be honest. Um, but the the main one that's in there later is is still there. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was kind of interesting because we weren't really sh- we were still kind of feeling our way into into the project at that point. So, and here's and by, the, you know, as far as. Uh, Development of your character, you're you're kind of punched in after that first scene. You're that right. that's your character. Right. You know? That's where you are. Yeah. You guys had some great chemistry on there. Like like you could tell. Like there's, I think you two probably had. Other than your scenes with Justin later, your being Michael, I keep forgetting this is just audio. Um, <laughs> your scenes with Justin later, throughout this, you mostly interacted with Don. Yeah. You guys had the, the back and forths, the, you know, you got off on the wrong foot pretty quickly. Exactly. Um, and that played really well. Yeah, it was. It was. I remember the tension being being good there because for me it was really weird. I remember coming in the day before and it's like, it's like three or four pages of dialogue Oh, yeah. And the preparation that I put into it was essentially by myself. Yep. So, and then a lot of the, you know, a lot of what they had to do, they, they had the times in between takes in the room together where I come in and once we cut, I pull out. Mm-hmm. You know, this is in that garage. So I remember every once in a while you guys would pull up in the, pull up in the back. So <laughs> to get, just to get, some, get to, to get some flow of air in there. So we had to, we had like, time constraints on that so I remember like thinking in my head going okay we got to get this in as little takes as possible and actually at this point right here I remember this is the one line that I actually regretted that I wanted to get like more and more takes on because mm-hmm. I wanted to kind of Jack Nich- Nicholson kind of rip through it like you know yeah you, you some... wait until I finish yeah. you wait until it finish. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted as many shots of that one line as possible and I remember like oh I wish I could have gotten that one you know that was the one that I was always shaking my fist at at the end going, well the best take Ooh. is always the one when you're driving home anyways. yeah exactly yeah. exactly or like two seconds after we say cut and moving on to the next one like wait uh, okay <laughs> I actually um this is one of those things that I changed the writing of after the fact. Um, mm-hmm. I moved a lot of things around because I realized that that what I had written was so long um, in terms of it's like here, he gives a paragraph about this and then a paragraph about this and it's pretty much the same thing. Right. So what I did was I just kind of rearranged it to make it even more intimidating. Um, but you you gave me such great stuff to work with that it was like it, it was so easy to do. The only thing that was tough. And this is really funny. This is I, I'm curious to see if fans notice this. But in the original script and what we filmed, any time they refer to the prize money, it's $100 million. And we realized that's a little bit it's ridiculous. It's a little extreme, right? <laughs> and so I re-edited it. In fact, it's you two. You two are the only two that actually say the amount. 
right? I re-edited, I, I cut it's it up in a way to say, to, to say a million dollars, right? And um, if you ever look, you don't actually see and either of say you it, say it. It. <laughs> It's just like, oh, no, a million dollars. Yeah, and so it worked out. I think, um, I think it worked better for the hosts but uh, but that's you know that's on me. I should have like I should have thought about wow, a hundred million dollars is way too much for something like this. Um, and a million love, dollars can after I just, taxes. Can I just point out, I love <laughs> that moment of you saying, "I can't believe I'm going through with this." Like that was just such a great, fantastic just bit. Like it's one of the moments in this show that I would freeze and like put together a supercut of um, of like all my favorite points from. From and it also just falls in perfectly with like the previous Leons. Yeah, that's so that's a frame you could put on coffee munch and maybe totally, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I wish Matt could have been here just because do, you do two had some memes. great moments as well. Yeah, he was a yeah. poor guy. He was so great, and he was only in it for like for like a minute episodes. and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I. Uh, well, I hope you guys had a good time working on this show. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I know that it was it was very guerrilla, it was very kind of haphazard at times, but um but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun for me. Well, the, I, this was my first big feature. Um and it was sort of my, you know, project to cut my teeth on and um and so it was great to have such a great cast and a great crew to to really pull it together. Um but I'm glad you guys enjoyed it as well. Oh, absolutely. And you you definitely had a vision, and you gave us that flexibility and, and trust, which was great. And, you know, from the script and filming it, you have to you trust your director that you're going to see it through. And, mm-hmm. and uh, Even if it takes five years. Right? Even if it takes five <laughs> years. No, I mean... It's usually how it goes. In the, in the indie world... Uh, yeah, it's not uncommon. I don't know. Yeah. It's not uncommon to never have a, your projects completed. Right. And, and uh, it's, as an actor, it's terribly disappointing. Mm-hmm. Uh, not necessarily to get the, uh, the, 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 the actual film or, oh, or copy, copy. Yeah. but uh, just that feeling of accomplishment. Yeah, it's like, it's like you work really hard on something and then you don't get it. I mean, just in reference to that, when we were filming this, I had, I was on my third year of a feature that I had executive produced and co-starred in with my, yeah, with my girlfriend at that time, and who's now my wife. And we were on year three, and finally had just gotten it completed by that point. So mm-hmm. five years, three years, especially when you're the one doing right. the brunt of the work on it. It was very, they're very similar and very mirrored situations too, mm-hmm. you know. Like the 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 rush and the timing to try and to try and shoot for certain certain film festivals and that how that puts the you know puts kind of the spur underneath you to to get things done as as quickly as possible and and then when those kind of film festivals and things of that sort pass on then it gives you that more time to mm-hmm. to look back like when when we had done it we were shooting for a Sundance yeah and we had like a year. Till the next Sundance deadline. Mm-hmm. Once we didn't hit Sundance, and we we're like, okay, well, we have a good rough cut of a film here. Right. Well, let's now that we've got, we've already missed that that major film festival. So let's go back and refine it as much as we can. You mm-hmm. know. And I remember like the copy that we sent for Sundance was like two hours long, and then by the time we got into film festivals, it was more like an hour and a half, hour forty. You know, right at that time limit. So it's like all those things that you. That you have to go and you know the the whittling away of it isn't right. it's you know it's really crazy how you know and the the big budget films now that you look at are all done so backwards it's like you're given right. you're given a release date before you even have a script yeah you know so you, everything is moving up to it's like the same kind of same kind of aspect but it's it it just works in a kind of backward way rather mm. than having at least a a, a script and a uh, you know a product. Right. Filmed rather than an opening date before anything else. Just to point out, while we're, <laughs> while we're at this point in the in the film, um, Don, how did you come up with sort of the the creepy vibe moments of Player One? Like, how what? Tell me a little bit about your process in because cre- I all I could give you was some of the words, but you you really established 
what that character was and, and all the different layers of him. How did you kind of come up with that? Yeah, I mean, I, it, I come from a, my training is kind of breaking the scene down till it's, it becomes insane. Right. Um, there's a couple shots of the behind the scenes footage where you see my script and it's, there's notes everywhere. Right. And uh, it's kind of, you, you write all these notes down, you, you read everything and then you forget it and, and kind of play in the moment. Um, my character is definitely a guy who his first uh, his first move is confrontation 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 sure and um, funny I don't know how to play poker I, I mean that was probably the sure. toughest <laughs> acting portion of it was playing the, playing poker and understanding what the river was and Don you want to come over to a poker game absolutely <laughs> absolutely high stakes <laughs> And fortunately, I, I think my shuffling was so bad they had to do it off screen. So, no, it really wasn't. I mean, the one of the one of the fans um, who who's been watching the show and sort of paying attention to the poker gameplay really wanted more gameplay. Interesting. To, like to see more, and it, it gave me the idea that if I do more of this, a season two or something like that, I probably would have a dedicated camera just on cards at all times. Inserts time. and right, because we we got a lot of inserts. But um, something that was interesting is it was so hot in there. We were running this fan to keep right. us cool, and <laughs> while we were while we were filming the B roll, we forgot to turn the fan off, or not B roll, the card play. Uh, we forgot to turn the fan off, so all of the f- cards we have we had no sound because it was just fan, um, so we couldn't use any of it. Yeah. I mean, I had some visuals, but a lot of the visuals were inconsistent, or maybe we didn't get the right cards in place. So I actually had very little usable card play to, to put in there. But it's actually okay, because to me, the focus was the story, not the, not the gameplay. It doesn't matter what cards it is if one player wins out over another. And the right. tensions and, and uh, tensions between the characters as well. Absolutely. And it's almost kind of interesting to, to see people put down cards like this and not see them. But you know, instantly jump right to the uh, to the reaction because let's say that had happened otherwise, I would have had to take a couple seconds to establish what cards were he had just put on the table, and by then your character, if he was going to react like that, would have fizzled out his energy. So that a moment like that doesn't really work. But we got some good card play. This is a really good one here. This is leading up to uh, our first loss of the game. Um, the countdown. Pretty much, yeah. I could probably, I could probably put a countdown on the screen, but um, no, I, yeah. I love hearing you talk about sort of how you established or developed player one because he is a, a very multi-layered character. There's a lot going on there, and I think a, a lot of it kind of mirrors uh, poker in that the stakes here are. I'm not nervous, I, but he's terrified. He's got a good. He has a shitty hand, but he uh, is trying to appear that he has a good hand. Right. And of course, I'm not a smoker, but I have to appear that I am a smoker. What were those? Do you they, remember? They were. A, it's an organic cigarette the kind of cigarettes. prop. Yeah. Oh, they're disgusting. Um, it's really <laughs> not so bad. Disgusting. And this cough that I have <laughs> so now is disgusting. is from uh, just a just a cold. It's not from. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> chronic smoking uh, Got cough it. or anything like that. Well, you you definitely pulled that off. No one would know you weren't a smoker. <laughs> that's for sure. Don't smoke, kids. And actually, as a filmmaker now, I'm terrified of people smoking on screen because of continuity. Continuity is the worst on it. We, we and every, out. and <laughs> like every actor that's either a current smoker or an ex-smoker wants to incorporate one of their characters uh-huh. as a smoker I've, at some point. I, and I think about that, too, because I've, oh, I've yeah, done a yeah, lot of independent films, and ooh, oh, that's going to leave a mark. <laughs> it, it actually does. <laughs> Matt, you okay? Uh, it I'm uh, is, not feeling sure. <laughs> Does anyone have an ad? He's done. I'd like an Advil. <laughs> yeah, filming independent films, knowing that there's not a continuity or, or, or script, script supervisor, supervisor or anything right. like that. Clocks and cigarettes. Um, if you watch some of the behind the scenes, I I always put my hand the same place mm-hmm. uh, when I begin the scene. Yeah, if I were, have a cigarette and things like that. When I was like editing, that, you were incredibly consistent. Um, and it, but you didn't. You were incredibly consistent in your movements, which was amazing for me as the editor. But you, you weren't consistent in the sense of you didn't just give me the exact same delivery every time, which right. was great. Um, because there, there were. I can't tell you how many projects I've worked on where 
it doesn't matter what take I use. It's the right. same. <laughs> At first, I thought you were going to say you were you were consistent on your movements, but you butchered my script. No, no, no. <laughs> you added a lot of new dialogue. Yeah. You know, you know, you did. You add? can only use one. You Actually, you know, you did add. You, you the, I think, I think the word "fuck" was in my script three times. And now I have, I actually, I intend to do it, and it's fine, because I think it actually adds to it. But I intend to go back and do a supercut of just the swearing from the well, film. Well, I, I think it'll be fantastic. I'm from uh, New England. I was born in Boston. And, and kind of like uh, profanity is like pepper. You, oh, yeah. you can use it in everything. It's good seasoning, for sure. Um, no, I'm absolutely going to go in and do what I call, in my head, I call the fucking supercut. Just a fuck reel? And pretty much. Just... Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and I think it'll be great. Every time I say fuck, you have to drink. <laughs> That'd be a great drinking game. I actually, yeah, I have considered diff- various drinking games for this. Um, yeah, we're jumping into the B-roll. Ben was here a little while ago. Uh, if you're listening and you haven't listened to the other commentary with Alexis and Ben, it was really fun to record as well. Um, got some good insight into Ben's side of things, because Ben really only spent most of his time with, uh, with Justin and Monica. And then, Michael, you only really spent time... With, with Hayden that, and the dog. With, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with Hayden and our old French bulldog. Most, most of the time I was out. I was out in the backyard uh, smoking cigarettes <laughs> uh, and just hanging by the fireplace and saying, Hey, Which, man, it's hot in here, and then stepping into the garage going, Jesus Christ, it's what, hot in here. You... Actually, you weren't in there as long, but when you right. were, you had the you had the worst because you were wearing a full suit. Right, but yeah, you I had to, like a, I got to step out. All, yeah, you guys, you had, all you guys just sat there and baked in there. Otherwise, pretty much. Yeah, the the sweat is real. Yeah, <laughs> we had we had a, uh, a, a little squirt bottle available. It was available to create sweat, and we used it a lot, but not for sweat. We used it to cool people down. Oh, and remember what? Ha- remember there was a huge force, or there was a huge wildfire oh, yeah. that went on during that same time. And didn't period. our cameras g- go hot? And we had to wait. Yeah, we had well they actually shut down or something. Yeah, or, yeah. well, no, it, it was not because of heat. It was because um, Ben and he still laughs to about this. Change the battery. No, Ben Booker, our our cinematographer, he sweat into the camera. Oh, uh, <laughs> it kind of shorted down a little bit. Wow. Nice. Uh, but he he still jokes about that. But that that was why every time you see him in the behind the scenes stuff, he's wearing like a headband, like a tennis headband, because it keeps the sweat. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> um, it's a good look. Old guy basketball. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, it's uh, the fire thing, and we talked about this in the other commentary, but just to give you guys a, an update, um, the fire, we had lots of planes flying over for right. to oh, drop yes, water, yes. which yeah. is sort of the main reason that the river took so long to do, because for the longest time, I thought all of my audio was riddled with uh, airplanes. Um, then I got really lucky one day, and I figured out that the audio Anthony recorded, who was our sound guy, was totally fine. It was the on-camera audio that I didn't know was simultaneously oh, recording. Okay. And once I removed those tracks, it was all good. There's only maybe two or three moments where you can still hear a plane or, or something else. All right. um, and so, yeah, that That's... was so exciting. It was like being able to turn around and get <laughs> all new audio from the original And shoot. that's fantastic because... I know I'm supposed to love the process, but ADR is just, I just, I wasn't going to call I don't you guys enjoy back. That. Yeah, I had already asked you to do too much. Um, there were many times that it crossed my mind, and other people had told me, like, you got to get this finished, you know, do some ADR. And I was like, no, <laughs> I can't ask them to, to come back and do more of that, <laughs> especially because it was it was so constant. It was like pretty much the whole thing. Well, by that point, too, we, oh, you were already in Seattle, weren't you? Yeah. You, you had left I would, LA I like right f- after filming this, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I would have had to fly yeah. down and spend a good bit of time down. Here just doing that, and right. at that point, might as well refilm it. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, yeah, oh, we're I don't think anybody's about to die. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, he just beat I think he just beat him to death. Or I think we talked through that anyway. Um, this would make a great play. It would, yeah. Well, that the, you know, that was kind of my Let's thought. Get that Tennessee Williams feel. Yeah. heat about it oh it absolutely would and that was kind Outbreak. of my thought was to write it in a way that because if you can write it as a stage play it's much easier to film for a lower budget um, you know we can we can get that something like that done but uh, yeah the dialogue the delivery was so great I love I love this moment between you guys like you can see you're already starting to rub each other the wrong way um, 
and that just kind of develops and develops all the way into episode seven. So, Don's character doesn't rub anyone the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> that man's like silk. <laughs> Yeah, most of the um, most of the color correction that I did for this, I sort of based off the shot of of player one of your character because I sort of was able to get set the tone that I wanted, um, and then and then sort of build off that. Um, when you shoot, you know, what was it? I think it was like eighty pages. It was like seventy something pages, I think. Um, when you shoot that in six days, it's really hard to make sure everything is consistent. Like Unfortunately, we had and, two two cameras, which was great. Right, we yeah. had two cameras, which which helped, but it also meant that we would, when you have two cameras filming five people at a round table, you have to do two takes in one side and then rotate everything and do two takes again, um, sometimes three or four, and um, that's a lot of footage. But it's also a lot of lighting changes. Yeah. So yeah. that's why sometimes there's a little inconsistency in, in lighting is just because we were just flying through it to get it done. And, uh, but I think it I think it turned out really well in terms of the look and feel. Except <laughs> it's kind of set to this cool desaturated tone, but it's actually if I had set it naturally, everything would be very very warm because it was very warm. Yeah, it does have a, it does have a coolness to it. Yeah. Which actually is kind of interesting because the the natural sweat that everybody's going through makes them look clammy, like like nervous instead of hot. Yeah. Which is, <laughs> yeah, which no, is kind I of like cool. it. Flops that sweat rather than <laughs> just yeah. internally baking sweat. Yeah. Um, I had a list of questions. Let me see if I can pull up the questions I had for you. Yeah. Um. What did you uh, What did you think of it when I sent you the email? And I said, uh, you know, I'm switching this thing over to a web series. I was like, who's Matt Longmire? Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so long. What's the river? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what is that? What the hell is a river? I was in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> is this a prank? No. Um, <laughs> it was like uh, it was like a, a kind of a long time waited surprise, more or less. Awesome. Yeah, I was excited that uh, you're, you're keeping it alive, and um, you know, web series are becoming so popular, and mm -hmm. and uh, I think it really plays well as a web series, especially as far as uh, you know the content and the way you had it broken up. Mm -hmm. it, it really uh, is a teaser for the next one and the next one. It just really flows well. Right. That was one of the hardest things figuring out where to cut it. In between things, but it, it naturally plays. The episodes are Absolutely. all almost approximately six to eight minutes, except for the finale. Um, yeah, it played out really well. And picking out the previous leads and next week's is kind of, I realized, is kind of an art form in itself. Sure. What do you give away? What do you hide? What, what do you, you need to remind yeah, people what of? Yeah, what are you prepping them for in the next, in the, right. within this episode? Yeah. What hint is being dropped? Mm hmm. Yeah. And you know, how many, like, you have to try and gauge where people are going to join in. Like if right. if some if if I think there's a high likelihood somebody's going to jump in at episode six, do I need to update them on everything from one to to five, or do I just update them on the last two? And with people's, you know, there's a scientific approach to to, you know, the length of it is five minutes. The attention span is it six minutes? Is right. it four and a half? That was kind of the big reason. I'm I sorry, started I lost you. What <laughs> did I say? Something. <laughs> that was the reason the first couple of episodes are so short. Um, the first one's only like a minute, which is the prologue, and then the the invited episode is only like four. Um, I wanted to get people hooked before I started showing them bigger uh, things, which is why uh, this is the second flashback. But which is why the first flashback wasn't until episode four, I think. I wanted to get, yeah, I needed to get through three good episodes and at least one player needed to die before I had people hooked enough to start showing them B story that they weren't connected to yet. Justin looks like he's already been in the room. Yeah, I think he, he has. Yeah, I think he, well, yeah, he came out from there. Well, the other You're thing. You're not supposed to notice that as a viewer. <laughs> the other thing, too, is that. I'll notice the reflections in the background. That house was really old. It was like, I don't know, it was like 1920s or something. But the. The air conditioning unit was probably just as old, and we couldn't <laughs> run it during the day because we would hear it out in the garage. 
And uh, so when we were filming this scene, it was really damn hot right. just in the house because it had no air conditioning running all day. Um, so it was probably, it wasn't in the like 110 or anything, but it was probably close to, to 80 in the house. See, I feel like you almost kind of cheated the audience, though, because Justin's storyline seems so, you know, like, unfulfilled once you find out that Ben was sleeping with his sister. <laughs> his wife. That's so funny. That actually, that would have been such a great twist. See, because as you're watching this, because we can't hear the, vo- we can't hear the volume right now as we're watching yeah. this, so you're reading it, and it's, you're like, you're almost picking up the tension between the... <laughs> I really want to submit this to Bad Lip Reading and see if they'll do, yeah. <laughs> do an episode of The River with Bad Lip Reading. Would it be great? We should do our own episode of ba- The River with Bad Lip Reading. That'd be fantastic. I'm sure we could come up with something. It's like Mystery Science Theater. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Well, I thought that's how we were shooting this. I thought there was a camera behind us right now, so we were just getting their three heads. No, there should be. Um, <laughs> so, Michael, tell me how you prepared for the role of the host. How did you come up with this, uh, like, the little nuances of, of this crazy sociopath? What animal were you thinking about? <laughs> um, well, if we were thinking in that realm, I was... I always kind of imagined him. I mean, first off, I imagined him more as a middleman than anything else. Mm-hmm. Like he wasn't, he wasn't the one that orchestrated and masterminded it all. But he was, you know, I just saw him like all these other guys. He was like an unemployed actor, you know, the normal sociopath of the day, just kind of. Mm-hmm. They're not <laughs> looking, all actors. Looking for looking for <laughs> looking for someone to stalk and no, um, no. But I I did see him like more. I I always found it interesting that I thought that he was more on the at least socioeconomic level as all these guys playing. But sure. the sociopath in him just kind of really got into turning the screws on all of these guys, you know? Like and then he, when, it, it kind of like somebody who is given a little bit of power and they kind of goes to their heads. Goes but, completely to their heads and, yeah. you know. Uh, and then beyond that, too, I mean, he, I mean, if he's the one that's kidnapping all these people and everything of that sort, and, I, I mean, and, and watching them all killing them, then, you know, it's... It was never mentioned, but it's uh, you. You almost imagine that while Justin's winning all this and going through all this, I'm in like one of these dirty trucks raping his wife the entire time. As I'm saying that, laughing. Sorry, but you know, I mean, that's what it's like. That did that, you discuss the subtext before the? <laughs> no, but I mean, even the way that she comes out when I when I pull she her does. out in the end, she looks I gotta, a little worse for wear. I tell you it's too, like, later later in the uh, in the finale, there's that moment where you. You ask Justin if he wants to up the stakes. Basically, That's he says, violent. "Oh, it's really violent. It was, it was messed up." Um, there's that moment. <laughs> he where checks his pulse. I know. <laughs> yeah, it was just great. in case the bullet and the, <laughs> the bludgeoning didn't well, do it. You know, if a maybe bullet to the could, head, maybe we should take slit his throat too, just to make sure. I know, right? But I if, had EMT training many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Yeah, there was a moment where in the finale you say, you know, what do you say we make this a little more interesting? And you loosen your tie. Right. And I'm, I'm and showing I, Hayden this. Right. Uh, and I'm like, hey, you know, here's here's the finale. Take a look. What, you know, what do you see? Scary. And she's watching it. And then that moment happens. And she sort of like shrinks down in the chair. <laughs> she looks at me with this weird face and goes. And then the so, shirt comes off. She's like. It's a little rapey. <laughs> <laughs> it was really rapey. And then I pull her in as, using that as like a leash, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll yeah. take the therapist for two hours. <laughs> Call it what you will. Oh, man. Um, but, yeah, I could see him doing that just because he has, a bit, you know, access to it in a way. Yeah. Um, something I, I, was, I was curious about because I... You know, obviously I wrote Monica in as sort of what Justin had to play for at the end. Right. But something that is kind of a question that's occurred to me since then, and I'd be curious to hear what you think. Do you think he had a hostage for each player, depending on who won? Well, that's what I was wondering, too. I mean, and if that's the thing, if that's the thing that he, it's like his own demise that how did uh, Ben's body get discovered? You know, if he's right. if he's killing off all these people, then right. he's got to be dumping these bodies too. Sure. Or is he just is he just throwing them in? You know, if the, this, this is essentially like a junkyard that they're in. Yeah, this is. Yeah, so it's like he's is he just dumping bodies in trunks of cars and things of that sort at the right. same at the same site, or you know, it's like what, at what point did he get sloppy and and have one of the bodies come up to where sure. 
you know, uh, that's that's my big wonder is like how how careful is he on that aspect? Because if he's careful enough to put plastic up up on everything, then he's trying to cover his tracks at some point, you know. So sure. where at what point? I mean, that's where we if we go into a, a prequel aspect as the as the next seasons with all of this, that would be. <laughs> That'd be, awesome. <laughs> That'd be good to see with, when his final des- demise would be. Absolutely. Although I look so much younger then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I the reason I, I put up the dates is uh, sort of an homage to when we filmed it, but also um, because if a second season rolls around, um, one of the ideas is that <laughs> the host is you know the host is dead. The mm-hmm. host was killed. And maybe it took the people several years to reestablish the game. Right. Um, and so the next round would have new dates of a more current, like modern time, and things may stream live to YouTube. You know, like there's like social media and the way, like if this had been done now, <coughs> there would be so many more, we'll call it social media aspects of like interactivity totally. aspects than just security cameras that happen to live And there'd be lots right, of product they, placement. Yeah. Absolutely. Is that a Diet Pepsi? <laughs> <laughs> and then it would be like, yeah, it'd be, when he, as he talks about his investors, it would be like them tweeting in what should happen Absolutely. To, to each of them. and Totally. Make it almost more of a Hunger Games kind of aspect. To well, it. yeah, and, and I have a lot of potential ideas for a season two, and I the only reason I, I won't mention them on the recording is because I, cool. I don't know if uh, cool. by the time this is released, I, I will have released those ideas, but once we're done, I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know. Um, I mean, I'd love to see the I'd love to see the episode of Don like you know like uh, like getting invited uh, mans- to the like game. committing manslaughter in some aspect. I know. <laughs> or like to meeting, a, meeting up into with a some bar fight and girl. beating someone to death with a bo- with a bottle just by accident. Yeah, I just I always pictured this guy is is very socially awkward and he's oh, he's a totally. loner. He he is. Uh, He's not married, doesn't have a girlfriend, and he just can't figure out why. Well, think about I mean, in 2009, picking up girls online was a very different thing than it is now. Right. You know, in 2009, all of this was very different. It's amazing how dated that became, just with one reference to some form of technology. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, I mean, ben, Ben's character could have benefited greatly from becoming an Uber driver. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> In this conversation, <laughs> hold on, I gotta pick somebody up. No, no, no. But but the thing is, Ben. There was more ways to gain. Ben's character was all about get rich quick schemes, right? Yeah. So he he should have become a consultant. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, this it's 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 all it's weird how it doesn't it's these days things can get dated so quickly. I like that tie. <laughs> I love this moment, by the way. You're like so I, I'm. It's like there's so many things happening for you in the sense that like you you're gonna get to kill somebody like this is almost exciting. And yeah, that was the, this is the part that that Don's character was really waiting for. Yeah, like, when do I get to kill someone? And I've <laughs> as an actor, I've had weapons training, and I try to make sure that I look like I've never held a gun. Yeah, I wanted to focus on that. And but, unfortunately, during the take, I think I shoot him in the chest, but the way it's edited, it looks like I shot down. Towards the table, I oh, noticed. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. It's it's actually based on camera placement. It's not it's not too far off. Um, I think some of I think if I remember correctly, I think Otto felt a little bit uncomfortable with it being pointed Maybe that's somewhere. I, so I think you pointed a little down because we were right. filming with two cameras, and I think you pointed a little bit down to make him feel a little more comfortable. Maybe that's what it was. Um, but I think that's it. Um, I love this. You're so pleased with yourself. You're like, ooh, they came up with something new. <laughs> it's like they're going to help each other? What? Kill each other quickly? Yeah. Otto's character got so upset. And you, and you, Michael, are just so proud of yourself. You're like so smug about this. It's great. You'd be surprised. And Don's just depressed. He doesn't get to kill anybody now. <laughs> it's like, oh, man. I can definitely see your your character's more animated now. You're now he's offering up the watch. Is that a real Rolex? What is that? Oh, that, that's that about the time. Real, that about yeah, yeah. The time. He's saying you have three hours left. That's right. 
Yeah. And you get the watch and the steak knives. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not all. <laughs> Call now. It's an episode of pornography. That's funny. <laughs> you have to outbid me afterwards. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like the the concept of all of the players consciously making a choice to stay. Like you gave them an out. You said right. you can leave. You, you know, I obviously didn't know enough to incriminate you in any way. So they just kind of were able to leave, and they all chose to stay. So, you know, some people have asked me, why don't they just rush the host? And I said, it's not the host keeping them there. You know, it's they, they made the decision to stay. It's they all want that money. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the real thing. That, they want that money. That hundred million dollars. I know. It's, it's absolutely, <laughs> I, every it's time I heard it. It's the greed, and, and yeah. you know, I believe... You know, the way I thought about it, my character has nothing to lose. And let's see how the, the shuffle goes here. Look no, well, that. this shuffle is different. This is the cheating shuffle. You were oh, intentionally so nervous. nervous. You were intentionally I'll nervous trying to I'll hide, buy that. hide your card where you're, you're like trying to hide the fact that you're cheating. And it worked out really well. Um, people who aren't super familiar with poker didn't quite get it, but that's on me. That's not on you. That's just on me not having uh, enough language in there to really explain it so I mean it's explained retroactively by um, Alexis talking about how like cheating in the game and whatnot without Don yelling what is that over there yeah <laughs> is that a pelican but here you go now you're getting excited because you actually get to you know you're going to get to kill somebody see it could be worse but and then, yes, we, we, we definitely in-depth covered the uh, Jesus Christ story of uh, Otto's, Otto's first <coughs> death, yes. which was amazing. I, if, you're, if you're listening to this, there's a really good chance I've probably already uploaded the uh, outtakes. That's, so you'll, you'll love that seeing That is a winner, winner chicken dinner. That was my favorite outtake. Oh, and Michael, you had a great outtake as well. But it wasn't, you, you were like so serious about it because you were staying in character. Um, in the, oh, here we go. Send me, home. Send me home. Like, the look on your face, like, like wow, that was amazing for a second. And then you feel really bad about it. <laughs> it was just great. It's like there was just, there were several moments in one. It was, it was awesome. And then, um, and then uh, what did we take that, th- two, three times? We did two special effects takes. Um, the, f- the first, first one was, was the Jesus, uh, Christ, Jesus Christ, yes. And the second one, it was very, very minimal uh, effect. It didn't really, like it worked, but it didn't work very well. Um, but Michael, you had a great uh, little, like a speech outtake. Like your line was, there are four bullets in this gun. Mm-hmm. And you, at one point you said there are four guns in this bullet. <laughs> but like you were trying to keep it together. And, <laughs> and so that was a good one. Um, yeah, there's been some. There've been some. I'm not crazy. Outtakes. You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love this bit. He's like, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to stack my chips and just pretend it didn't happen. Glad we Mr. kept that tie loose. Mister Confrontation with his little cower back. <laughs> oh yeah, well he's he pull back the curtain. He was all show. I mean, you could tell he was all show. Like, anytime things really happened, you were, like, the first to back out, which was, which was great. That, to me, is, is like, it's, it's what a real character would do. It's, like, what that, what that character would really do is what I was trying to say. Um, you're, you might talk a lot, but if anything actually happens, like, you just, it's like you get to, you get to safety pretty quick. Exactly. <laughs> Pull your girlfriend in now, front of you in a public after, shooting after, kind of after seeing him beat on that pillow. I know. Uh, it was it was easy to uh, play intimidated by him. Totally. Yeah, that pillow really got it. <laughs> and I think, oh man, you have no idea how long it took me to clean up the blood off of that that thing. Okay, I have to give you a story. I completely I didn't tell this story in the last one, so I can, <laughs> I can tell it here. So we had all this blood covered plastic, right? I. This isn't going to be good for the LAPD, but I called. Um, it as was, I was an cleaning, actual body that I had. I was I was cleaning up, and I was you know shutting everything down, and I was throwing things away, and so I called the police department and I said, "Hey, we just shot a film, um, and it included lots of plastic and lots of stage blood, and um, I've got you know I've got it all here." What's the best way to dispose of this so I don't cause problems later, so nobody finds it and freaks and out? Said, 
In the trash, jackass. No, he actually said, he's like, you can just throw it away, we'll never find it. And I just, in my, I do not believe, like the fact that he actually said, we'll never find it, was amazing. So I did, I put it in a bag, and we had, we were moving, so I called, um, I called like a, like a bulk trash collection uh-huh. service. And they said, okay, have all your trash out by 7 a.m. the next morning. <clears throat> and so we did, we put it out the night before. We wake up in the morning, and I walk outside, and all of our trash is just strewn all over the yard. And we were, we were like picked like the night before, like people came and like went trash hunting in all of our garbage. They, you can see them work their way from one side across and you can see right in the middle, they open up a bag that's full of uh, blood covered plastic plastic. (laughs) and they didn't touch a single bag after that. So it's only half and you can see exactly where they stopped. And that to me was like, all right, fine. There's your karma. I don't need, you know, this is perfect. It's perfect waste revenge. management, if you did find that body, now by the way, kudos to you. <laughs> and after that <laughs> day, you didn't have anybody well. take, touching your trash? No, we weren't there much longer, but yeah, nobody touched the trash. Uh, but that was that was hilarious to me. That the police would say, you know, just put it in the trash, we'll never find it. <laughs> oh. I was like, wow, I feel very unsafe now. Um, for anybody listening to this, please don't take that as advice. Let's assume that in five years the LAPD is up their game and they will find it and they will find you. Just so, as a disclaimer. <laughs> that was a ploy, actually. Don't kill people. Reverse people's. psychology. <laughs> and then he pulled his sunglasses. Don't think down. that this is a how to. Oh, we'll this is not a how to commentary. This is just a funny story. The how to commentary is on track three. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, man. Pretty funny. Yeah, just invite him in the house. Let's go. He did. He, he did. did. He said he couldn't stay. And um, he banged his wife, and then he <laughs> left. <laughs> well, the, if you notice, that's the first thing he says. He says, "Where's your better half?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably at the hotel I left her at. Oh man. Monica will probably think this is hilarious. <laughs> um, that's pretty funny. Now, where was this one filmed? That's the front of the house. Oh, looks like. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's the front of the house. The kitchen scene, or the dining room scene is inside. The, we filmed almost everything at that house. The only other outside locations we had were the exterior of the game room, which was in this super creepy, terrifying junkyard thing, off in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, where did you find that? Where was, was that at? Uh, somewhere north of Palmdale. Nice. And it was it was terrifying. The guy there was like cleaning his gun. Yeah, I think I remember you. We were all because you shot that like a day before the last day, wasn't it? I th- it may have been on the last day. Yeah, I think it was the day before the last day. Because but I think because I remember you. you we were super us delayed it. trying to get back because we had some issues. Like Monica's car got stuck, and there was all kinds of issues. It was really hard to get out there. Right. Um, oh, this is this is Don's. This shiny, is my shiny scene. My favorite scene to to shoot. It was it was just really well done. Like the chemistry between you two was fantastic, and I think part of that was because it really let you two play off each other. We only had two cameras really. We had occasional shots on Justin for dealing, but most of the time it was just a scene between you and Alexius, and it was just a really well done scene. And there was so much intensity happening there. <clears throat> yeah. This is this is one of my favorite episodes for how the whole thing goes down. Like overall, this is just a fantastic, uh, a fantastic episode. Like you guys are just basically threatening each other back and forth, but he's totally baiting you into to like betting everything you have. And one thing Alexis was saying was that in this moment, he knew his character didn't care if he won or lost. He Interesting. Just, he just knew that if if he could, if he had a chance to take you out, he wanted to. Because that the cheating thing is like it was such a moral issue for him. He he could beat a kid to death, but if somebody else cheats the cards. <laughs> yeah. But actually, it does. It, but his beating to death of the kid was like a mercy beating. So yeah, I mean, it was. As, uh, <laughs> as fucked up as that sounds, but yeah, he could have just let him drown in his own blood. Yeah, and there were some questions about that with the uh, like head wound, and I justified it by saying blood came down through the sinuses and into his lungs. But um, see the cards. Yeah, this is just such a great scene. Like, 
the two of you going back and forth, and then your your uh, your death coming up was so Are you me? Like, in, just intense. Like the whole intense is the best thing. Yeah, the best way I can describe the whole thing. Don't do it. And the reference to the panic, like him trying to take care of the kid by keeping the kid from panicking, and then you set him off to a point that his whole thing is he wants you to panic. So what was going through your head while we were filming through this, other than a bullet? <laughs> oh, there's your brain. Yep. Well, I, 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 cause I thought I was going to lose the whole time, you know, and I, I, it, it, it was, uh, it was impossible to hold back, uh, my fear and, and, um, so I wanted to throw in some, I wanted to show the cracks and that's why, you know, you, you try to show some laughter in there and, sure. and bravado and right. and that's why I try to mix it up there uh, especially in such a stressful moment all these emotions are, are flashing through his mind and and uh, I wanted to hopefully create that kind of tornado going on in his head emotionally sure and then still have some sort of arc so it crescendos with bam lights out and right. you know that exclamation of his brains against the wall it's just like oh how did you kind of put yourself in that place like what was what were you I uh, think using about sick for, cats for sick cats yeah that's that's the magic as, as, as an actor I suppose I think everybody has to go to a, a you know some sort of dark uh, no win situation and, right. and um, but it's not about Dying, I would say. Right. For me, some of my most terrifying dreams are a dream where I know I'm going to die and I accept it. I don't know why that terrifies me so much. Like, the acceptance of it, just it just gets to me. It's like some of the most intense nightmares. There's shows like, um, what was that show, The Following, mm -hmm. um, where they're, like, sacrificing themselves. Like, the idea of sacrificing yourself not to save someone or to do something heroic but just to sacrifice is so messed up to me huh. um, but like so for example if, if you're once you lay down those cards <coughs> and you know that um, that you lose and basically obviously the players are going to continue the game so that means you're out you're done like I don't know why those moments to me are more terrifying than something that might be more intense, but may or may not get you. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, you you go into this uh, animalistic. It's fear of flight. It's fight or flight right. type thing, and and uh, physically it can take me. Um, but you have no other option to, other than fight. And how are you going to fight a man with a gun other than you know verbally and maybe outsmart him or. Um, and because he's confrontational, he's, he's still trying to pepper in uh, some insults. and mm -hmm. He's at least going to get like some last hits in verbally. Sure. You would almost expect a table flip. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. You would almost expect a table flip. Like, you yeah, know what? You know, no. him flipping the table just to try and create in a, a diversion to get out. like this, if somebody did flip the table and people lost track of how many chips each, each person had... Makes you wonder how that you know. It's the uh, now it's you the tell wrinkle. us I know. the new wrinkle. The new wrinkle. I have to save some stuff. You were just so unlikable, seasons. Don. We we had that idea the whole time. <laughs> I could. I like could we were talking about. It. We're like, what if we flip the table? Run and... after him like a linebacker in a football game. And... Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing. One thing I kind of saved for potential future use was yes, your your character cheated and he was punished for it by another player, but the host never addresses the fact that someone cheated. Um, and I kind of did that intentionally because I felt like it was already addressed well enough by player four. But, um, but that's definitely a future thing that could be done is, is, you know, does something happen to one of these players that is, you know, if they cheat, like, you know, sure you can cheat, but this is going to happen to you. Well, I wonder this... It's a microcosm of life. Well, here's the other thing then, too, though. If you're, if you're talking about, like, 
what if he uh what if the host has taken all like had some sort of ultimatum for all yeah. those people? So do I also have like six of these other guys' family members <laughs> stowed away just in case one of them won? <laughs> well, and you know that's that's something to consider. It's it's a maybe. You know, I mean, I think in our head we we knew that. I mean, obviously the host knows that uh, knows who Justin is, knows right. who Player Two is. So it would make sense if he only did that. To, to player two it wouldn't be unreasonable, right? Um, but it would also make sense if he did just maintain a hostage for each. And I've had thoughts about that for a potential season two of like ways to use that or to like motivate or you know repercussions for cheating or things like that. Right. Um, I have to imagine though if that, if if that's the case, like if it, just if that is the case, if that if other games previous that if the the host has never let someone leave alive, right? If then. What's the difference if they cheat or not? Because the end right. game is always going to be the same. In my as as far as I as sure. far as I see it, as the host, you know, and also the people that are watching. Right. I mean, it's more. It's more. It's like who gives a fuck about the game itself? It's sure. more about the sociological right. kind of the experiment that, just that plays out. Yeah. The, the game. The game is the means to the end to get what what right. everyone wants to watch. So what's it going to take to sure. for you to to go to that limit and kill somebody? And I and I would say when I wrote it, I had in, in mind that that he did have a hostage for each person. We don't address what happens to those hostages, but once I would dead, once these guys are dead, then they're either yeah. just let loot. The trunk is open <laughs> and just but blinding I, sunlight I would say from the that desert. He does because you have this line that, um, that I put in there for. Uh, they says um, like when he chooses the money, he says good choice. They always they usually take the money. Right. So that means that in the past he's given the hostage ultimatum before. So when I when I was kind of putting it all together, I assumed he had one, but I never thought about what he'd do with him once he died. Uh, this is such a great moment. This is one of my favorite Alexia's moments. Is is this kind of like like he first he thinks he's gonna win, then he hates it, and then he's like trying to protect him from being a bad person. And he kind of plays hero. This is just a great. It's a weird moment, but he's like. He's like, I can tell you're not a bad person. I'm going to, you know, save you from yourself. So you can go ahead and kill and someone else. And kill someone else, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. There's, Take revenge for your there's brother. There's a little bit of logic there. I think that that death and, and the previous are, are the two startling. Yeah. You know, they were, Absolutely. the way you cut it, it's just, ooh. Yep. It's just... Headshots usually have a, have a profound effect on people. When they worked really well, too. Um... They both of them, from a technical standpoint alone, they both worked very, very well, um, and I think they were staged in a way that that made them very easy to pull off well. Um, with autos, for example, player three, um, you know, his was a little tougher to try and get a really good blood spurt through a shirt, um, and then with Matt, we focused on the front injury versus mm-hmm. the 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 effect, so. We didn't really get to even see that. Um, so here's our here's our finale. So Don, sorry if this ruins it for you. If you haven't no. seen it, the, for those listening, this just came out today. So Don is totally off the hook for not seeing the finale yet. Well, somebody's uh, going to die. That's what's, what I think. What's gr- What's great about this is that, is that I've been waiting for this finale to come out for so long because yeah. my my reel has had only stuff up and <laughs> the finale. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to give anything away, so I you can't know put funny? any I had to change, in it. I had to change my my editing reel because my editing reel had a color correction example where I used the scene where Justin is walking away right. uh, off in the desert, and right. I was like, shit, I have to take that out. Now I was wondering, did you did you also ask us not to post some, like when you originally gave it to us like on Dropbox or something? You're like, you know, use it for your reels and stuff like that, but. We still uh, haven't really we still haven't released it yet. So there was a there was a point in time where I was so stressed about it. I was just like, do whatever you want. With it. Right? Maybe. But I then thought, I thought that. But when then the, it was when I knew I was going to work on it again. And I knew I was going to do something different. It was it was like, feel free to use this. However, just don't tell the general public who dies. That right. Was, that was really all it was. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. So it was, yeah, there was a point where I wanted to use it, where like a gun yeah, thrown on me, and you, well, right you, before I it's before, all out before, now. Yeah, it's already out there. <laughs> Sorry, Don. <laughs> Don, I die. <laughs> no! <laughs> All the Spo- sexual tension that we built up is for naught. <laughs> there, there is some, some, some 
sexual tension there. And it's just, I don't know, it's not really sexual tension, but it can be misconstrued as sexual tension, um, which is very funny. Hey. Hey. For those, for those listening, this is my wife Hayden coming in. Right as Matt saying sexual tension. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but this is, um, let me see. Let's see what other questions I had. Um, what was, uh, <laughs> I'll go with a nice, oh, here we go. This, the showdown, the showdown begins. Um, what, uh, what would you say was your, your favorite moment, either for your character or for you during the shoot? Um, what would you say was like your takeaway from, from doing the project? Um, I think there was a, there was kind of a, a combo it's a, and it's mostly, a lot of it is based around this scene because this is what I remember auditioning with was this yeah, scene. that's right. And I still have your uh, screen tests. Oh, do you really? Yeah. That'd be nice to see. Because yeah. I felt, I remember, I remember the, the audition itself thinking, I was like, wow, this is, a, this is a role I could really dig my teeth into and and really make my own and and uh, just from the audition itself I felt like that that just from the vibe from you that there was a lot of a lot of give to play and discover and kind of make it make it your own mm -hmm. um, so it's like there's there was always excitement for this scene coming up because uh, I had never I had never done it with Justin it had always right. been read off with uh, with you you and mean the scene hey, you the mean the scene <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're talking so, about sexual. Sorry. We, we just go on to the sexual tension. And <laughs> <laughs> I think during the audition, I read. Um, That's what I was going to say. I was like, I read it with you, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. So it was um, to actually to, to actually get it get it on camera and and play off the person that it's supposed to be intended for was was always uh, open the case. Really exciting, and right. Justin and I also kind of had this weird like. We didn't talk to each other that much during it, and it right. was, there was there, there was. You were talking to the dog. I was talking to the dog. I was talking to Hayden. Well, I um, think that worked in your favor, though, because you guys got to keep some distance. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and, and Don and I didn't talk that much no. either. I didn't. I, I kind of kept away from the guys that I had the most, most kind of tension with, right? Uh, or supposed tension, or, or you know, uh, intent towards. So sure. So while we were all waiting around and 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 kind of bullshitting and eating and everything of that sort, there was at least on my part, there was very little interaction because it was also. I mean, I was also. It was also just kind of naturally set up like that. So <coughs> these guys were always in the garage together, and they they had in between takes together, and I mm -hmm. was, you know. Oh, I'll tell you, man. In between takes, we were getting out of that garage. <laughs> right. Absolutely. We were right. like, we we're like, wait, we cut. All right, we're out. Turn the fan on. Yeah. Open the door, turn the fan on. Ring of hell in there. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty, pretty toasty. So then, yeah. So, so coming into it, this was always, especially this day, this was always, you know, really exciting for me. That moment just there, um, there was a really. You had this fantastic laugh that I had to keep in there, but you're laughing at something that I had to cut the line. Because um, he, went, he went in all in, he on went like all in on hair or something hair. like that. Yeah, and um, I should have written it as he went all in with like a pair of threes, like a very specific thing. Because when you play against him in a second, you go in with a pair, right? <laughs> and so I was like, uh, let's cut that line. But the laugh stayed, and it was, it was fantastic. Um, yeah, you had these great like it was very like Joker moments, <laughs> you know? Like if we just put some some makeup on or something for the. Like to give you creepy, this is it. This is the yeah. rapey <laughs> time. <laughs> like, Here we go. <laughs> it's rapey time. <laughs> I've been banging this chick in the back of a <laughs> burnt out dumpster. Really interesting. Yeah, and and the funny thing is, is that you you don't you're not like this in person at all. Um, you know, <laughs> you're not too rapey. I'm not, I'm not very rapey. You're, you're only like you're only like ten percent rapey. Not. <laughs> More of a seventeen point eight. Get more of a child molester vibe in person. <laughs> that's that's rapey. That's more. Oh man, that's terrible and hilarious at the same time. You know, I've, I wear but, I wear my khakis really high. <laughs> I'm always wearing Christmas sweaters. I'm sorry. My mustache. Oh man. <laughs>
But the uh, but the ooh, yeah. I beat her too. I didn't know. I, no, that's I, makeup running from crime. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, you don't beat her too bad. You're kind of nice to her. I'm a little nice to her. He's real I'm a nice gentle rapist. <laughs> You're a little too nice. I'm to a her, gentle rapist. <laughs> I rape with a gentle. Why does that sound like an awful band name? <laughs> <laughs> gentle rapist. Going down that rabbit hole real quick. Oh, okay. oh, did we? Does anyone get? Does was the aces and eights supposed to be a? It's a reference. Yeah, it's called. I mean, with the dead man's hand, we understand. But it was. I don't know if, if viewers got it. I hope. I hope so. If not, it's just a nice little inside thing that when I do the uh, the like MTV pop up video version, Wild Bill Cody. It. Yeah. The non poker player it just yep. looks like a nice shot. Yeah, it does. It's just like, wait, oh, two pair. Okay, cool. Aces and eights is what Wild Bill Cody had in his hand as he was shot in the back. Everyone knows, just in the Wild West history portion of the game. Now known as Dead Man's Hand. So, um. As we as we sort of near, man, he's like jamming that right in my. <laughs> you walked into <laughs> my, it. I know. Yes, right that's in my voice all you. Box. You walked right into that one. But, uh, yeah, the, the bullet, th- I remember the gun didn't work very well. It was, uh, right. it was really hard to get it, it to was, close. It wouldn't close, it wouldn't cock very well. So it was always, we yeah, had to fake it a, it a lot. Janky. So some of the editing here is just getting, like some of this like cutaway is just. You only to, had four guns for one bullet. Though. I know. <laughs> now here's my intention here. I like the idea that I was trying to still keep my cool. Yeah. And keep the smarminess, but at the same time, try and talk my way out of it. You can see it losing. Yeah, it's like, hey, it. here's the money. Here, take the, take the, take the $100 million. And million then, dollars. This is, remember we tried to discuss if I have we, a gun. Well, you did. You had an extra prop gun. And you right. can see it in the security cam thing. I still have that did shirt, by the way. <coughs> With the what? The clapboard? Yeah, I will. No. No, I still have that uh, shirt, by the way. Oh, do you? I still, have the, I still have the pants. I use the pants, <laughs> I use the pants for work, and I, they're, like, <laughs> huge on me, but they're still our perfect work pants. That's funny. Um, yeah, we did discuss you having a gun, and you did have a gun. And right. And we, we intended to film it so it looked like you were going for the gun, so it was a little less just straight murder from Justin. Right. Uh, it was a little more self-defense. Kind but, of a Han shoots first kind of aspect. Yeah, 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 but we just didn't catch it very well. Right. So this, if you look at the security camera on the right... There, I do have a gun in my hand there. Yeah. Yeah. And on the right of the table, the table looks funny because there was a clap slate there the whole time. (laughs) Really? Yeah. That's hilarious. So, but I I kind of photoshopped it out. Um, So, as we sort of near the end of this, um, what's it like? Either of you can go first. What's it like seeing this five years later? I look so much younger than. I have a hard time cri- not critiquing myself. Sure. If anything, I do. So it's. But isn't there like a statute of limitations on on self critique? Is there? Just talk, Don. Just get it out. <laughs> <laughs> you could just chalk it up. Oh, I was younger then. That's that's true. I was young. I needed the money. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. We got paid for. <laughs> I did. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> no, I think, I think that's a. The, the beauty of independent filming because everybody's doing it for the magic of, of the project and, and right. uh, you know everybody's in it to win it and and uh, I thought it was a great project actually and selfishly I, I, I love my <clears throat> character that, that you wrote it was, it was a great character r- was great arc to so it so happy with what you did um, oh thanks you, you, you provided a great uh, pathway for me and, and you, you you let us you know, play with the characters. It was, it was, yeah. it was great. And you guys didn't have any involvement with this scene, so I'm not even sure if this is, this may even be reasonably new to you guys. This kind of final closure of Player Five's family. Um, everything was wrapped up. Player Two got his revenge. The wife came back. The brother, you know, all these different things. Except for in the very beginning of the show, uh, Player Five. You know, he's, he's like, my family's broke, and I'm their only hope. And then he dies. And so this was, this was that sort of... In a very sort of gruesome re- way. Very, very gruesome <laughs> way. Twice, essentially. Uh, so this was kind of that final closure there. Um, Sorry we killed your son, here's some money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry your son was the martyr. <laughs> 
Other than feeling very young, Michael. Uh, Does a million dollars <laughs> fit in an envelope like that? No. It's a I, check. I, it's a check. I think it's just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it's enough. To, it's like, here's, here's your house. Mortgage. It's 10000 the and then a check. Here's yeah. one-fifth of the prize money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's about what I thought your son was worth. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it clears their house. Good, where's the rest of it? <laughs> Who gives a shit? <laughs> I'll take it. Close the door before anyone notices. Now, do well, they know that their son's dead? Or is he just... Yeah, missing? yeah, they know. They were crying. They started the whole thing crying. I actually was very tempted to make this all your death scenes, but I decided so to be does, a So then in the end, then, does just... No, oh, it's Matt Ryan. Like the football player. Anyway, <laughs> um, does the... Uh, does this mean that Justin then informed the police that... Oh, I don't know. All these bodies are in this location? I don't know. Um, but as it wraps up, uh, any other final thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for uh, <laughs> Thank you for casting, for casting me. Yeah. You can't recast it now. It's... No, no, I can't. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> yeah. We're locked in on this bitch. Well, thank you guys for uh, coming and joining me for commentary and for the show and for waiting five years and just kind of everything. We're patient. Yeah. We're patient. And We're everybody patient. out there, thank you for watching. Absolutely. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much.